Yeah, I'll talk. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Walkie talk, even though it's way too early. Well, that doesn't make sense. It's never too early for coffee. Way too early for second coffee. So, hey, everybody, welcome back to another video. Kara and I are doing some finish work. She's glazing. I am going to be putting some finish on some delicious charcuterie because in the States, when we eat cheese and sausage, it has to look sexy first because it's a celebrity. It has to look good. Maybe Santa Bula. That's right. Well, since we're doing this finish work and, you know, it's kind of boring, I thought I'd share a story at the same time of my childhood. So for people that are my age and older. Well, my age too. Okay. We weren't fancy enough to have what you're going to talk about. Well, you didn't have one because you have a gravel driveway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My knees are proof of it. <laughs> so, let me reiterate. Kids who lived in town. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, fancy lads. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I was thinking about when I was a kid in town. I grew up in a small little town. And in a town, you have roads and stuff. Kara didn't have that because she lived in the country. Still do. We moved into town when I was five years old. You know, when you're five years old, you're like, like this big. So I wasn't big enough for a real bike, but I was the perfect age in the 80s for a big wheel. For those of you who know what a big wheel is, you can share my excitement. But if you don't know what a big wheel is, a big wheel is the plastic tricycle that's about, it sits about two inches off the ground. It has one big wheel in front and two smaller wheels in the back. And in between those two smaller wheels is a seat. All my friends. So I had a big wheel when we moved into town. It was a neat thing because, you know, it's like your first bike ever. We had a longer driveway for in town and it sloped downward to the road. So that was kind of my parameters at first. I'd jump on my big wheel and I'd be pedaling down the down the driveway, and then when you get to the end of the driveway, you couldn't go any further because you go on a road, and road is for cars. Now, even if your town's a small town, you still got that little kid mentality where you think you're gonna get run over by a car if you go on a road. So I'd get to the end of the driveway and I'd have to put the brakes on, and then you go back up the driveway. And for a while, that was, that was as far as I could go. But then as you start getting more courage when you're doing your big wheel training as a little kid, then you start looking at the sidewalk that's going perpendicular to your driveway. And it's like, I bet you if I go down the driveway, I could do a 90 degree turn onto the sidewalk. You get points for drifting. No, there was no points. Oh. We didn't have video games back then, Kara. True. They weren't really I'm invented. Not even Commodore 64 yet. Maybe. But then I started going on the sidewalk. And the sidewalk is chunks of concrete and you're not used to those bumps. So you're driving your big wheel and it's just go, 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 go. It's a new experience for you as a little kid and it's fun. So then you start doing that. It's like, yeah, I know how to big wheel. I'm cool, man. This is when you're single digits, five years old. Already swearing like a pirate. In your head you are. In your head. Understand, you only know swears from your parents because we had four channels growing up. True. And when you have four channels and you're the remote, you don't want to watch TV. So I started going on the sidewalk. And then after a while, you know, your world gets a little smaller because it's like, okay, I've been on the driveway. I've been on the sidewalk. When do you mean your world gets big? Because after I'm doing that for a while, it's like, okay, this is getting boring. I need to do something else. Oh. And then you start finding out that there's this curve where the driveway intersects the sidewalk and it looks like a little ramp. So then as a little kid, you get this idea in your head. It's like, I wonder if I could jump it. And you don't know if you can. And so there's no practice as a little kid. It's just balls to the wall, all or nothing. I'm going down the sidewalk. And understand, I've never been in the road yet because road is scary. And you're still, what, five? Yeah, I haven't grown up too much since my big wheel days. <laughs> <laughs> I was a professional big wheeler for the last seven years of my life. Yup, yup. I never got invited to prom. So then you start looking at the curb as a ramp. You, you just go for it. So I go down the driveway, make a 90 degree turn on the sidewalk. I go to the end of the sidewalk, which is the end of the block. And then you turn around and then you're just staring at this ramp because you're processing. In like adult terms, that'd be a car at a race sitting there revving an engine. Go, bro? That would be me with my big wheel. <laughs> sitting there processing. Okay, this is gonna happen. I can do this. Slick shoes, 
like you're one of the goonies. And then so you just start pedaling, 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 and you're going down the sidewalk. The little ramp is getting closer and closer. And you don't think about consequences. You just think about doing it. I'm going, going down the sidewalk. I hit our driveway. I'm going across the driveway. And then you take a little veer and you start going towards the road, but then you hit that ramp. It was like slow motion just as a little kid. And you're in the air for what seemed like forever. And then you land in the street and you go and your momentum carries you and you stop pedaling and you just do the sideways Akira slide on the motorcycle. If you're being evil Knievel. Oh God. <laughs> and then you stop and you look back at what you just did. The world kind of stops time when that happens because you're processing. What the hell just happened? Did I just defy gravity? And you're like, screw you. This was awesome. Screw and you. then, <laughs> and then that's your new thing. You are the curb jumping kid. And so that's what I would do. I would sit there and I'd go down the sidewalk, jump the curb, land in the street, get back in the driveway, do the same thing. And I just do that over and over and over. And I was so happy because I thought I invented something. I did something nobody else did. And as a little kid, chances are you did. But then one day I was doing it and I'm jumping a curb, jumping a curb, and I heard applause. And then I'm like, what the is going on? And I look and there's my parents with the neighbors and <laughs> they were watching me do this the entire time. And of course, as a little kid, you don't know what you're doing. You don't think anybody's watching you. You're in your own little world. I didn't want people to watch me. <laughs> so then after I saw them applauding, I kind of just went back to garage and hid because I don't want people to know I was jumping with the big wheel. Aww. It's my big wheel story because 80s. So that was, I would say, 1983, 1984. Five going on six-ish. Was it, were you in kindergarten yet or not? I graduated kindergarten. <clears throat> okay, so you'd be five, six. So I was a big first grader now. Oh yeah, big baby. Yeah, okay. So now all you kids out there in YouTube land, you know what it was like a little bit about growing up in the 80s and having a big wheel. I like how you talk down to them when you say kids. I wasn't done yet. And for you people that are older than us, you had a big wheel too. It was just a bicycle with that really big front tire that you used to get back and forth from work in the 1800s when the world was still black and white and you could leave your door open and nobody would rob you. You're a jet You know who you are. Snarky much? Snarky. So thanks for watching everybody. We appreciate you hanging out with us as we do some mundane art stuff and reminisce about our childhood that will never really come back. But then again, what? watch it. Everything the 80s is coming back. If you'd let me finish, I, don't want I would, no, I, listen to no I would let the audience know my poignant story that comes full circle. I listen to no <laughs> The childhood that would never come back, but actually never left according to the music and movies and TV shows that are on right now. And lastly, Thanks to all our patrons out there. You know who you are. We know who you are. We appreciate you supporting us because it helps us out a little bit every day to know that there are some cool people out there that think we're cool, even after this big wheel story. <laughs> well, because they might have a similar story. <laughs> and talking down to you if you're younger or older than me because Gen Xer. So that's all we have. So now it's just gonna be some gratuitous footage of sexy charcuterie boards and glazing pottery. So thanks for watching everybody. See you next time. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>